Hey guys, Mars Lincoln here bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video and today we have another one of our no item Super Battle Road runs. Uh, this one is a big one. This is one that I honestly hadn't been working on all that long recently. I thought I was kind of under the impression that it wasn't going to be possible to do or at least would be incredibly difficult and um, whilst it wasn't the easiest one by any stretch um, I don't think honestly it didn't take me that many attempts to do it but I mean you'll see in this run especially near the end uh, we do get some very good RNG um, funnily enough when I tried the first few attempts uh, I died in the second fight so many times that I had actually forgotten who the third fight was even against but obviously here we start off with some pretty good RNG because Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta in the front takes both of the super attacks so of course he takes very little damage um, this is pretty much going to be I've said it before in like all the other no item runs uh, RNG plays a huge role in uh, these runs things like for example STR Vegeta with his stunning ability um, if he doesn't stun then obviously that creates way more instances where we are going to get hit um, and it just like there can be whole turns where it seems like everything's going fine and then if Vegeta doesn't stun you get super attacked later on in the turn by the enemy that you wanted to try and stun and then you end up dead so one unit that kind of stands out here I think who's on this rotation right now uh, it does make it a little bit wonky for some of the key but one unit who I think is a standout uh, unit on this run who you'll see puts in quite a lot of work is this AGL transforming Goku so obviously here he has type advantage over the evil boo so I'm letting him take all those attacks uh, he has built in damage reduction and then he also in his first couple of transformation states he does raise his defense when he super attacks so by putting him in that slot in the middle like we did there where he's only getting hit after he's done a super um, he's gonna take a lot less damage and um, that works out really well pretty much throughout the run um, he's actually a much better defensive unit than I had given him credit for um, like when I first ever tried some attempts on this stage back when the new stages first came out I wasn't using him on the team and um, the funny thing is you'll kind of see throughout the run um, taking not taking into account things like type advantage just from like neutral attacks uh, that AGL Goku probably takes less damage than a lot of the units on the team. So it's one of those things I kind of passed up on him originally because when I do my videos or my showcases where I'm trying to use specific teams against certain events, I don't like to use that Goku on the team because obviously he doesn't start off as a Super Saiyan 3. So if I'm doing a showcase that is like you know the Super Saiyan 3 team versus this particular event I don't bring him because he doesn't start off as a Super Saiyan 3 and I want to use a full Super Saiyan 3 team but I know a lot of people out there especially before he'd come back on a few banners a lot of people were using that Goku as the leader because they had not pulled the Bardock um, and yeah as you'll see in this run he works out very very well and one good thing is the fact that obviously most of the units on the team I think in fact pretty much all of the units on this particular build apart from that Goku at the moment they all have over in a flash but the double in Bardock leads they fortunately have over in a flash and prepared for battle so whenever we can get the two of them side by side we are actually able to get some key for the Goku whereas otherwise he doesn't really help the rest of the rotation all that much um, obviously they share common links like the um, Super Saiyan Fierce Battle for those units that have those um, but yeah sometimes it can be a little bit wonky with the key and obviously we do want Super Saiyan Goku to super attack because that helps him to build up his defense so of course he has type advantage here so he takes out evil boo um, just like I've said before in previous runs when you're using a team that has a stunner or multiple stunners once you get down to there only being one opponent left it becomes a whole lot easier because obviously here we are able to try and stun boo in the middle and then if we get the stun we are basically good for two turns um, I decided to put Bardock in the front 
and go hard on the back end because after doing a couple of these runs um, Bardock obviously is the leader of the team and he's I do think he's an underrated unit like people don't rate him as highly as they should compared to some of the other Dokon Fest exclusives but on this team in particular on Super Battle Road he does take more damage than quite a lot of the other units and um, that Super Saiyan 3 Gohan does actually take less damage from most attacks than that Bardock so even though I'd rather keep him on rotation for that reason, I decided to put him in the last slot there just in case uh, Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta did not stun. So you'll see a lot of that in a lot of these no item runs, and I've mentioned it before, is it's a lot easier to play it safe and assume that he's not going to stun. And that's why I put Gohan in that last slot. And then of course we have LR Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Those of you who've been following the channel for a while, well, no, he is one. He was my first rainbow summonable LR, and then unfortunately, once I finally rainbowed him, I then have pulled him like two more times, uh, and there's still LRs that I don't have. So he kind of uh, haunts my summons, um, but he obviously comes in very useful here because he's the only LR for this team, and he is rainbow. As long as we don't get his 18 key super, he tanks really, really well. And then like you saw at the end of that previous fight, if I can get him, him into a situation where he's not taking any attacks, whether it's because there's none in that slot like you see here on this rotation, or in that previous uh, turn where the enemy is stunned, then I will try and go for his 18 key. Because obviously he deals a pretty ridiculous amount of damage. But if we risk the 18 key super... Um, with the possibility that he's then going to get attacked afterwards, he will take a lot of damage. Um, the difference is insane. Like, he'll take a couple of thousand from neutral typing, um, and then once we've supered, he'll take easily 60k plus. So it's a huge difference. Um, but there you go. So Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta is still coming in clutch. It's basically what he's here for. Um, obviously we can't count on it 100% but like him stunning every single time he attacks is basically what we want and um, you see here I can't get the 18 key super with LR Goku if I put him in the middle because he's getting attacked by Hoi who has type advantage over us anyway so there's no slot I can put him in apart from the last slot and I kind of don't want to float him off rotation because he's such a good support unit um so what i decide to do here is i've got to put him in either the first or second slot but i just have to guess where hoi might super attack so i decide to go for the first slot because obviously he does have a rare chance to stun with his 12 key super but it's a much lower percentage chance than somebody like the str vegeta so it's not something that i can try and count on Whereas obviously with STR Vegeta, I'm kind of counting on him to stun every time. But fortunately, Hoi did not super attack in the first slot. And as you can see there, he took 45k thanks to the uh, type disadvantage. But fortunately, with uh, stunning Harudagon right at the start of the fight, we need, we've been able to deal a huge amount of damage to Hoi. So obviously the goal is to try and keep Harudagon stunned. And then just lay into Hoi so we can get rid of him as quickly as possible. So that's why I will sometimes do sort of weird things like this. Like Bardock, he raises his defense when he super attacks. So you never really want to put him in a situation where he's getting hit before he's done his super. Because he will probably take 80, 90k in that first slot. So we kind of have to put uh, Vegeta there and uh, obviously grab the orbs that will allow him to super attack so hopefully we can super attack Hoi and then uh, sorry we can stun Harudagon and then I decide to super attack Harudagon with the Bardock just on the off chance that if uh, Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta doesn't stun here obviously Bardock has the chance to um, seal with his super attack and of course I wasn't even paying attention this time around either, but the Dokkan bar, obviously we don't really want to give it to Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta because he's not the hardest hitting unit on the team by any stretch, but we needed him in that first slot. And then units that have effects like sealing or stunning, when you do the Dokkan attack, those effects can only be applied to the one unit they're attacking. So because we've got Hoi onto such low health, 
I kind of figured that as long as we target Harudagon with that Dokon attack from Vegeta, hopefully the Dokon attack can get the stun. And then the fact that the Dokon attack, of course, has that AoE effect, the attack should kill Hoi anyway. Unfortunately, it did. So that leaves us in this very good situation that we're in now, where we only have Harudagon left. He's stunned. <laughs> He's also sealed. So we can go for the 18 key super with the LR and we can even get a super attack on the back end there. So we are going to deal a huge amount of damage to Harudagon this turn and we try to pick up as many same type orbs as we can. Look at that 4 million attack stat and uh, Dragon Fist for a sweet 3.5 million crit and then an additional normal as well. Why not? So he basically did 4 million damage by himself and then yeah this Goku... I was going to say should finish him off, but it was a little bit close. They had to get the additional. I've said this in previous runs as well. I feel like I'm going to say a lot of the same sort of stuff in these videos, but it's always relevant. So we always want to end the fight with Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta off rotation because then we get to go into the new fight with him on rotation because obviously he is our best tank. We want him to be around as much as possible. So... Here we go, so I've got to admit, like I said, I'd forgotten who the third fight was even against after having a couple of attempts where we failed against Tarudagan and Hoi. And I'm not going to lie, when the uh, when it loaded up and I saw that there were four enemies, uh, my, my heart sank a little bit because the other fights with two enemies are were bad enough. But of course the one big advantage uh, on Super Battle Road has always been that even though four enemies, that's obviously four different enemies that could super attack you uh, each one is slightly weaker because there are so many of them so and then fortunately we do get lucky with uh, baby super attacking straight away in the first slot we literally want as many of them that want to super attack this turn we want them to super attack uh, Vegeta so he can tank all of that damage and then I go for the stun on baby because he attacks so many times we don't get it but then Vegeta comes in with the additional and gets the stun. I think I mentioned this previously, but I remember well over a year ago probably, there was a big argument in one of the groups I was in about um, you not being able to stun from additional supers. And obviously we now know very much so that that is not the case, uh, especially now that we have the clear indicator of which attack actually got the stun. So we managed to stun Baby. That leaves us in a good position because we're not getting hit multiple times in any of the slots at the end and then Gohan getting the additional super attack which is really good because he raises his attack so he deals tons of damage to his uh, GT counterpart on the end there so this leaves us in a very good position for this turn so haven't spoken about him much in this run so far but AGL Trunks is a very very good unit on this team I feel like if you don't have Trunks uh, and Vegeta this run would be so much harder um, because Trunks even though his defense is kind of RNG based uh, he can take double digits as long as his guard passive activates and then that obviously leaves you in a very good position so had to avoid the 18 key super with LR Goku because he's just getting hit way too many times but we do manage to get only his 12 key and uh, he does have the chance to stun, so that can always come in useful every now and then. But I decide to target the Gohan just to see if we can get rid of him. We want to get rid of at least one person as quickly as we can. Um, so that we have less potential enemies that can super attack us. So with the type advantage, Bardock should finish him off here. Oh yeah, nice big crit as well, 1.8 million. And uh, it's goodbye Gohan. So we're down to only three opponents. We've got Goku on the rotation, which is very good. Um, he is, of course, a strong, strong unit. We don't want to put Bardock in front of those physical attacks. So I leave him in the middle slot because I'm kind of hoping here if uh, as long as Vegeta stuns Baby, Bardock is only having to take the attack from Trunks. Although maybe I'm apparently I'm rethinking this here because... Uh, okay, so I decide to put him in the middle. Oh, right, okay. I realized that because... Go 10 is on such low health here. If I put Goku in the middle slot, hopefully between his and Bardock's super attack, he should they should take out Go 10, and Goku in that middle slot will take a lot less damage from the STR trunks than Bardock would. 
So, unfortunately, Vegeta doesn't stun Baby. So this is where my uh, my heart starts to race a little bit. Um, Goku taking 25k. Very good, as you've seen throughout the run now at this point. Other units definitely take a little bit more than that. So he's very, very useful. And uh, Goku did take out Goten by himself, though. So we get to put a little bit of extra damage onto Baby. And then we even get the additional super attack as well. Um, no seal with either of them, unfortunately, but we have done quite a lot of damage to him. So, only two opponents left. Baby's on half health. I'm starting to sweat a little bit here, because uh, we definitely don't want... Like, it's not ideal that Super Saiyan 3 Goku has to take an attack from Baby with that type disadvantage. So I'm really not sure how I want to play this rotation. Um... I need to get rid of Baby as quickly as possible. But I also don't want to float Goku off because he's so good defensively against anyone other than an int unit. So I did, for a second here, I was really tempted to go for the Dragon Fist in the hopes that it would just kill Baby. But then I felt like the follow-up attack from Trunks would probably still kill us. So as you can see, it's getting pretty tense. Our health is fairly low um trunks coming through with the defense and then goku comes in clutch with the stun on baby because that attack on goku from baby would have probably been about 40k um which would have left us very very low on health um after that attack gohan would have still survived that attack at the end but we'd basically be on about 20k hp at this point so now, this is where I'm starting to uh, I'm starting to breathe a sigh of relief because our Goku's transformed to Super Saiyan 3, so he has over in a flash now. So as you can see, everybody links up really well. Baby is close to death and he's stunned. So that means we can put Bardock in the first slot here because Bardock, on this rotation of these three units, Bardock will take the most damage out of anyone. And as much as I want to keep Goku on rotation because he's so good, especially now that he's transformed, I also don't want Bardock to take loads of damage. So I'm still, as you can see here, trying to decide what to do. I also want to try and pick up same type orbs wherever I can. So yeah, this is getting real. This is a real hard decision because we are so close. Like I said, this is the closest I'd even got at this point. So I finally decide. That it's more important to keep Bardock out of harm's way, even if it means he can't super attack. And then just go ham on everybody else. So, have I gone for... Yeah, so I've gone for stunning Trunks, because obviously if we can stun him, it's basically GG. We don't get the stun, so this is where I start to panic a little bit. But Goku up to 2 million attack stat almost. Does a nice big hit on Baby... And now here we are. We are 10k HP. Both of our enemies are not stunned. Um, we've got to really rely on Trunks actually getting his guard ability to activate here. Because if his guard ability doesn't activate, um, Baby and Trunks won't kill him here. But it leaves us in a situation where Bardock would probably get finished off by Baby. And so, of course, again, I can't risk the 18 key with Goku. And uh, we just kind of have to see. My uh, heart is racing at this point. It's all down to how this rotation plays out. So, what is Bardock going to do here? Can he save the day? He does seal, baby. And he gets a huge crit as well. So, I think he takes him out. Yes. So, as soon as I saw Goku attacking Trunks, I thought I was uh, in for a good one here. And then, yeah, the fact that... Trunks didn't super attack Goku. Goku only took a couple of thousand damage. And now you look at this rotation here. I was uh, getting pretty sure that we were going to do it. Because we have a lot of damage output here. Just like a previous rotation I mentioned. On the off chance Vegeta wouldn't stun. Gohan would definitely take less damage than Bardock. But look at that. Bardock with another big crit. Doesn't quite save the day. So... Vegeta comes in, the stun kind of unnecessary at this point because even the 570k was enough to finish off Trunks. And there you go, we have what, 12k HP, uh, sorry, 120k HP left. So yeah, 
Very, very good. That was, like I said, out of all the attempts that I tried at doing this run in the last like week or so, this was the only the second time I think I'd gotten to the last fight. And uh, it was the only time I'd gotten to the last fight in the actual like two days that I spent workshopping this team and actually managed to get it done. So very, very hyped to get this done. This was literally as well the last run that I had time to attempt before I had to go to work that day. So it's obviously taken me a couple of days since to actually get around to like edit and make the video because I had literally time to record this and then I had to leave. But there you go. We didn't beat our best time, but I'm definitely not worried about that. Like I said, this is one of the stages that I thought would be very, very difficult and we managed to pull it out of the bag. So what more would you expect from your Super Battle Road King? So there you go. That is Super Saiyan 3, Super Battle Road, no items completed. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Mars Ningen. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. You can follow me on Twitch or join my Discord. The link is in the description below and I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.